Alright, working on a little Tecumseh here again for the scooter and uh, got a little bit done. Let me see, is it a little better? Uh, I was I soaked this uh, carburetor. It was it was froze up. The throttle was froze solid, and uh, I uh, lubricated it with Aerocroil. Let it set overnight. And then I uh, got a big pair of pliers and just worked it and uh, got it's uh, working perfect. Get the little spring on there is uh, got this working like it's brand new. So now I can clean this thing up. But uh, I was looking at this and uh, I was thinking about what we're going to do with it. Let me grab a, let me grab a stool here. Get comfortable. Uh, yeah, I think I, we're going to tear it completely down and then paint it. There's not, they don't even have any paint on the back or nothing like that. So uh, even though the paint, the paint's pretty decent on the block here. It's so light we're lifting it up with uh, one hand. So uh, yeah, the paint's pretty decent here. It would have cleaned up nice, but... Uh, might as well give it a fresh paint job. I think I, I was going to go with black, but I think I might go with white. I'm not crazy about white, but uh, almost every Tecumseh you ever see is white. So, uh, I wasn't going to take the the coil off here and everything because, you know, it's inside the flywheel. And I don't know how them guys uh, adjust the air gap and stuff like that because you do have adjustments here. But uh, what I'm going to do is, it looks like it's it's twisted all in one direction. You see you got a little space here on the back of that bolt and down here you got a space on that so it's, it's looks like it's cocked all the way to the left so I'm just going to uh, scribe around them bolts take that off and when I put it back I'm just going to put it back right in the exact position that it came off and you know we'll go with that yeah as far as that the uh, yellow spark goes uh, I was thinking it might be the condenser but you know it's just a, a wild guess and then my buddy down in Australia, he actually uh, sort of confirmed it. He says, he goes, the, the condenser's probably crap, so uh, we'll take that off and uh, we'll check it. And uh, it wouldn't surprise me if it was uh, was way off. Uh, Zig gassed up, I think, it goes by. So uh, let's put the camera up on a tripod and we'll, we'll take this off. And then we'll take the side cover off and uh, we'll take the piston out to crank out and uh, we'll just go from there all right I got you guys probably up there so hopefully you can see and uh, all right let's uh, try and take this off I'll turn this this way maybe you can see a little better you know what also uh, I loaded this up this uh, housing I loaded this up with aero coil and uh, we got that working pretty good That's good. <clears throat> I don't know if I mentioned it, but this is, this is what I use to, to loosen up stuff, Aerocroil. It's a little pricey. I think it's, <clears throat> I think it's like uh, $16 for a can or something, but uh, I've used it for years. I know a lot of guys uh, say uh, automatic transmission fluid and acetone, acetate, whatever. That works, but, uh, you know, I just pick the can up and it's there. You know, I don't have to mix nothing or anything. I'm sure the other stuff works, but, uh, you know, stick with what you know. All right, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to just scribe around these, these bolts here, so I can put them back the way they came. You see, I'm not familiar with uh, Lawson's or Tecumseh. You know them guys. You know there's got to be there's got to be a way to uh, adjust them, but uh, Road King just don't know. I'll be able to scribe this a little better once I get the bolts out of the way. At least I got a an outline to go by.
Get this connector wire here. Spark plug. And there we go. Get that out of the way. You know, that'll make it easier to clean, easier to paint everything. So, got a cam here. Sometimes there's a front and a back to these, you gotta look. I see some kind of writing on there. <coughs> Let me get my magnifying glass. My eyes aren't what they used to be. Yeah, there's actually an arrow. And it uh, says, says the comps are on there, so. And a part number. And on nothing, there's a back, so. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of engines do that. You know, they'll put the writing on the front so you can see it. That way you don't uh, mix things up. All right. I drained the oil in this, so let's take the valve cover off here, see what's going on in here. Yeah, I didn't plan on doing this, but uh, hey, we got nothing else to do. Nice and clean that is in there. Is that crazy or what? Some guys are saying this engine's got to be from the 60s. A lot of guys are saying 64 and stuff like that, but uh, that's a long time ago. What was that 60 years ago? And for something to look that clean? Crazy. Crazy, tell you. Crazy. Alright. Let's take the side cover off here. got six bolts so uh, I'm gonna shut these down and I'll unbolt everything and then we'll, we'll pop that cover off together. Alright, got all loosened up and all the bolts out except for these two. Turn the air conditioner and the fan on so it might be a little noisy in here. Right, let's see how this comes off now. Okay, sounds good. Looks like the gasket might do. We might be able to save the gasket. I know a lot of guys saying, well, just replace the gasket, you know. I hate to do that on, a, on an engine like this. You know, the gasket's worth more than the whole engine. Get a razor blade stick on Turn these off because I want to. I want to try and save that gasket. All right. Yeah, I think we're able to do it. It was, it was sticking in a couple little areas, but that's okay. And the only thing holding on now is the, the seal. Coming. 
is only a baby hammer and uh, I'm only hitting on this these uh, little lobes here and they're designed to hit on you, know, you got two lobes here and one right here Got that off, got our good got a gasket. There's your governor, governor. Huh. Actually the inside looks pretty good. Looks very good. Hmm. I thought I seen a couple pieces of metal, but they're only pieces of gunk. Uh, let me look this over because I don't I don't see any timing marks on here. I might have to make my own. All right, I'm gonna turn these down for a minute. All right. At first look, you you really don't see any marks, but then if you you put it at top dead center and look at it, you know you you, you sort of find stuff. So uh, let me take you off of there and show you. That way you guys uh, know what to look for. All right, hold on. Hold on, hold on, I got you, I got you. Alright, let me turn your man look at you here. Let me pull up a stool. Alright. Like I say, I got the piston at the top dead center there. And then you can't really see unless you look real close. And let me put a light on here. There is a tiny little mark right there. I guess that that hole there, you know, that uh, that direction in the in the right direction, and then right above the hole there, there's a, a little uh, a little mark, and that mark, there's no mark on the on the crankshaft, but there is a keyway that holds that gear on. So uh, that's where you mark your you line your marks up, and then you can just pull this out, and let me see if we can get a better look at it. See it? Over here, I think the white's messing with it. There you go. You can see that little mark right above the circle now. So it wasn't that easy to find, but it was there. And like I say, this one, you just line it up, line it up with that uh, that keyway there. There's no dot or nothing, but uh, see, guys that work on the comps would know that they wouldn't have to worry about it. All right, I'm gonna unbolt this. You know, I don't see any any lock washers on that, so I don't know uh, how that ties in. I see the slinger, but I guess uh, I guess they just worry about the tension holding that together. All right, let's uh, take that out and see what we got. All right, this engine uh, this engine must not have much use at all, man. Everything in here is pristine. You know, it's hard to believe it's. Uh, you know, 60 some years old or whatever. Even the, the tappets, you know, can you see the tappets? The tappets are like brand new. And I was looking at the nuts that hold the connecting rod on, and uh, they are lock nuts. They got little divots on the side, so. Uh, Alright, before I take that out, you know what I do? I don't. Briggs, Briggs has a mark on the piston, and it tells you which way to put it in. And some engines don't, so I always mark them. The in view. So I put a little, little arrow right here. And that arrow is pointing to the valves. With that arrow, if you look at it real close, it's also a V. So the V for the valve side. Oh, road king, you kill me. All right, let's turn this crank so that the there we go. Get the nuts. I don't know if you can see it, but they they got little little marks on there and a slinger. Hmm. All right. Let me unbolt that, and then we'll turn his bag on. Right? You don't have to see that. All right. Yeah, I got my baby wrench in there. A lot of times you can't fit these wrenches in here to take these off. You got to use the opening. 
So that's why I figured I'd bring you guys along. There is a mark on the, the connecting rod there, so the cap, so you can uh, line the cap up. You see? Where you guys at? See a little mark there? That's a, a lock nut. Take our slinger off. Interesting. Hmm. All right, got a loose here. Got to take the cap off. All right. See on one side. One side's got a little uh, titty on the top there. And the connecting rod has the same thing, so. Alright. Both, both watches together. You still in frame? Tough one. All right. This looks good. This looks almost too good. You know, look at there's no there's no marks at all on that piston. Let me get a let me get a rag here. Let me get a towel. Let me go away. Look. There's no marks on this at all. You know, usually it'll be blue or something from running hot. You don't see any mark inside here. Like I say, uh, Briggs Briggs has an X on one of the one of the sides of the piston. Let you know which uh, sides front or back. Yeah, I don't know. What, I don't know what to tell you about this engine. I don't know what the deal is, but. Everything in it's pristine. Pristine, I tell you. But you had to, I had to take it apart. I had to find out. No carbon at all. Nothing. Hmm. There are two little nicks. Tiny little nicks on the top of the piston. Like maybe dirt or crud or something got in there. I don't know. You guys tell me. Wow. Look at that. Absolutely no wear on that bottom rail. Crazy. I got a nut on here to help me turn this thing around so I can get it off. And it'll pop that crank out. Let's see if I can hold this crank. I don't know if I could have left that on or not. Oh, well, look at that. Look at that. Look at all them journals are perfect. Look at that. No, no wear at all. Unbelievable. Even the gears, the teeth on these gears are like brand new. Same with this. Brand new. Yeah, this thing don't, this thing must not have had, I can't imagine anybody replacing all these parts. So, uh, yeah, this thing, this engine hardly has anywhere at all. Look at the lobes. Can you see that? The cam's like it's brand new out of the box. Unbelievable. Okay. 
Yeah, some guys are saying this might have come off a tiller because of the way the carburetor was and, and stuff like that. And I, I believe it, you know, because you don't use a tiller that often. I'm starting to wonder now if, if the hash marks in here are, are factory. Hmm. Even the valves. You know, there's no carbon or nothing around the valves. You know, this, this here is nothing to talk about. Hmm. Alright. Let me look at them valves. Might as well pop them out, right? We'll get everything else apart. Alright. Don't go too far. Alright. Yeah, I took the valves out. And they're, they're just about uh, perfect too. They're like brand new. You know? Let's see this valve here. That's the exhaust valve. That looks perfect. This one, this one's the intake. Got an eye on there. But uh, I'm going to clean them up. Yeah, unbelievable. Check out this piston. You know what? Let me turn the light out because uh, too much reflection, you're not going to see nothing. Yeah, the rings on this piston. I'm going to go in real close, so give it a chance to uh, focus. Here it is. Look at the look at the lines on the piston, the machine lines on the piston. That's how unworn this is. Never even got a chance to wear in. And the piston itself. See that? The lines. And the piston itself still has the lines on it. Yeah, I'd venture to say this this was a tiller. And it probably wasn't used more than five or ten times. It was put aside. The carb froze up on it from just sitting. And that was the end. Nobody ever used it ever since then. So this thing could have been sitting for, you know, probably probably 20 years or something. Then somebody decided, you know, we'll take the engine off and throw away the tiller. Because the tiller probably started rusting away and froze up. And the engine's probably been sitting on a shelf in a, in a garage somewhere for uh, another 40 years or so. But anyway, yeah, uh, it's probably the, the most pristine engine I've ever seen of this age. And I'm, I'm saying it's, it's 50 or 60 years old, so. Alright, we're going uh, we're gonna to clean everything up. Clean these uh, valves up. The piston real piston really don't need much cleaning but I'm gonna clean the rest of the block up and clean it and then uh, get it ready for paint and then we'll start putting it back together and then decide what we're gonna do with that crank where'd that, where'd that crank go here we go yeah a couple guys uh, suggested bushing it and everything like that but since this is such a bastard size I think the easiest thing to do is just cut that down because this this is 5 8 which is standard cut the rest of that down and put a keyway in it and then then it'll be standardized for just about anything. That'd be just as easy as making a bushing. So, all right, let's clean things in, things up, and, uh, and we'll we'll go from there. All right. Yeah, this video is getting a little long, so I clean. I just cleaned the area up here, and uh, we do have a couple of minutes, so I figure uh, why don't we just check out? Just out of curiosity, check out the condenser. So I got my meter here, my condenser meter, capacitor meter. And uh, I'm just curious, should be should be uh, 0.22. That's what 99.99% uh, .99 of the capacitors are on small engines. So uh, let's uh, take it off. You get, you don't have to take it off of here. The ground is okay, but you have to disconnect the positive, or else you won't get a, a good reading. Let's see, it looks like uh, 3.8, maybe. Nah, a little smaller, a little smaller. Oh, that'll be uh, maybe 11.30 seconds here. There you go.
Yeah, capacitors go bad over the years. You know, I've seen some of them last. Uh, I used to work on old radios. I've seen some of them last a hundred years, and then I've seen some of them last five, ten years. So, you you never know. Like I said, most of most of the time, uh, the newer ones are made of epoxy, so they last a lot longer. But these are just sort of encased in wax sometimes. You guys in frame. Huh. What's going on here? Let's see if that'll work. Get these two uh, positive connected to each other. Interesting. We'll take a reading and we'll see what it does. Can you guys see the meter here? It's at zero. We'll ground out one side here. All right. And then check the positive on this side. Huh. Wow. I'm surprised we got any reading. Uh, we got any spark out of that at all? Uh, you know what? It's probably not reading right because it's uh, it's connected up to this other wire. Let me get some uh, wire snips and uh, we'll cut that off. Alright, uh, got me some uh, strippers here and some cut off uh, things. Stick it on there. Can you guys see that? There we go. Alright. Yeah, let's, uh, yeah, so let's take this off. Get this wire, get this out of the way. Get these wires and Looks like it'd be this uh, this bottom wire here. I'm gonna cut it right in the middle here, so I have a little. You know, sometimes it's pain in the ass to uh, heat up the metal there, and it's easier just to connect wires if you have to. So, is this the bottom one? Yeah. There we go. Let's get our uh, our ground back hooked back up here, and then our positive. Oh, we lost we lost our ground. There right, we go. This. Okay, so so this capacitor's way off point uh, seventy. Like I say, it should be. Point twenty-two. All right, so we know we gotta replace that. Wow, that's pretty far off. I always keep a, a, a good capacitor. This is a, this is a brand new capacitor. I always keep that around just to check the meter. And this is a point twenty-two. So there we go. Point twenty-one. That's well within range. Sometimes. Uh, it fluctuates, but uh, that's what it should be. So uh, I know I gotta find a capacitor for that, or stuff it. Use that same one and stuff it. All right. So what do you guys say? Enough of this. All right. I gave you 30 minutes. Uh, I don't know where we're gonna go next, but uh, wherever we go, we'll see you there. All right. See you guys later.